Today I wanted to talk um, really at a very much practitioner level about uh, what we've been doing and some of the work we've done with evaluation uh, of frameworks. And I guess for me, um, it's been very, very clear this idea about smarter, not harder, hasn't really sunk in uh, across a lot of the community sector. And it's not because we don't want to, it's, I think, because we haven't really thought about how we can make it simple. And I know there's a, I look around the room and I see a number of evaluation professionals here and it's really good to be able to think about how this works for the community sector. Who are we? I'm going to start with that. Community Information Support Service is a not-for-profit that is, has been set up and established to help support information sharing and help the community sector uh, work together. With that in mind, it's interesting that we've ended up working across the community sector, my background, and then technology platforms, because it's often that link which is a really big problem. The real question is why evaluation? Why would I have a, a deep interest in evaluation um, when I'm working across information and IT platforms? Why would evaluation be such a key tool? One is cost. I mean, we've done three projects which we're going to talk about today and we've used an evaluation framework. Those three projects we've been able to deliver within budget. We've got several other projects that we've worked on without evaluation projects, without an evaluation framework, and we have our own budgets beyond, beyond what we would expect. And I truly believe that a, an evaluation framework, and we need to be thinking about how we sell evaluation. Evaluation is around helping people understand, get on the same page, and obviously you guys as pro professionals keep us on track. So we've been doing that using that methodology. We've got several different evaluation um, frameworks we've used. So this was one we worked with Volunteer Program Logic, really quite simple. We were looking at the organisation policies, quality experience. If we have quality experience, we're going to have better client outcomes, better outcomes leads to community benefit. Obviously, it works the other way around, but it's that normal program logic. Here's another one that we worked on recently. This was trying to um, help participants get the most appropriate services to meet their goals in, in a youth sector in Logan. So putting the framework together gave us a really strong guiding um, uh, way to move forward and keep people focused on what we'd set out to achieve so that we could truly evaluate. In the end, um, we're now starting to evaluate, do we have a coordinated approach to quality um, employment services for marginalised young people? And we're able to now go back to where we started 12 months ago and now have a look at that. But again, within the cost structure, we've been able to maintain it because we don't keep running off in different directions. So I think often evaluation can be seen as expensive and the community sector don't understand. It's actually one of the good tools to keep you in budget. And if we start selling and thinking about evaluation in that way, I think we can get uh, different types of things. Being smarter is simply four things. We found that using information that's already collected is the key. And so often in an evaluation framework, we're trying to assess and evaluate, evaluate certain things, but a lot of information's already been collected. When we've been able to use that information that they're collecting already in a format, we may change the mode, we can make pretty good progress and it really contributes to the ease and, and being able to do evaluation in a smarter way. The other thing is map what's being done. Talking to the organisations, because we've been working across organisations, getting them to map those current relationships and what they're currently doing, taking that time has been part of the success. The other thing that I think is really important is linking with other information sources. I truly believe information is power, but when you can overlay information with other sources, community information, census data, and you can start to overlay that information, it, it brings so much more richness to the community sector and their understanding and their buy-in in the evaluation process. And finally, what we've done, um, and I think this has probably been a key, so each one of these is, we did it together and that's where the success came from, but using evaluation to know that we've actually got a real life solution. By sitting down with the community organisations and going through and saying, well, this is really our goal, we've made sure that that evaluation does actually stack up. So we've we've got a solution that has is solving a real life problem. I'm going to go through three examples today so we can just demonstrate how this worked. And the first one is Service Linker. And Service Linker really was a response to quite a big problem. That problem being clients were receiving duplicate services and not progressing towards employment. Now employment's expensive, trying to support someone to get a job. 
And we were finding um, with some of our um, organisations we worked with in Logan, people weren't progressing through those outcomes or they were jumping around and, and people couldn't, in the employment sector, get their head around. So what we did was we came up and we went through those four things. We looked at what was already being collected, we mapped their work, we looked for other information sources and then we started with our evaluation framework. And we're just going to go quickly to Service Linker. Service Linker was a really simple product and it was about um, <coughs> getting organisations to use their current process. We have to get people to sign into our buildings anyway. We're collecting their name, their number, and a bit about them, who they're here to see. So we went through that same collection process and said, if we were to collect that information and we knew why the person came to see us, would that help us understand how people are accessing services? So we looked at that and then we mapped it across the services and we realised that information which was being collected and will still be collected, if we could change its mode, we could then understand how people access service delivery. We ended up with something quite sim really important was keeping information safe. So this is about client information. So firstly, organisations who use the system sign up so we can check that they're um, part of the system. This is the organisation, Wesley Mission are part of the program. We logged in and giving them control of what they're mapping. Quite simple and then they can add users themselves. Really simple system, but it's what happens then when they open their user attendant. This is what they leave sitting at their front desk. And when people log in, they can simply say, yep, I've signed in before, continue, what day were you born, continue. It's really simple. It takes about eight or nine seconds for people to log in. When they log in, the information is put into the system. It, it finds them if they've been to any of the participating services so they're not duplicating entry of data. It then just puts, it translates their information to the statistical linking key to protect privacy and then logs that entry into the data. One of the challenges was quality service delivery. When, they're, when you're with the person, if they want to show where they've been, it can go back to the database and display all of the instances of service delivery so that the person, the case manager working with them can talk to them about how they're progressing what's happening. For so a really simple system using the data that was collected. The other thing that became really important was the services, the, the managers then wanted to go, oh, well, I want to know more about this thing. So we were able to then de-identify the data and then provide it back to the group of organisations. So now we can look at people attending multiple service delivery. An important piece of work, which was quite simple. Now with, with the evaluation data, we're now collecting service usage frequency of access, gender, age, location, and the type of service. That information is allowing services to really consider their effective behavior, what's working, what isn't, and challenge their practice. It's also collecting information so we can see when people are, what, if there are certain demographics attending multiple services. So we used information being collected from that front book, and we really only added two other fields to make it unique so that we could sign in in about eight or nine seconds. If it was longer than that, it wasn't going to work. We mapped across the services and now we've got a map that is building over time and we can see all of these things, which is mapping that service delivery across organisations, not being done before effectively in real life, in real time. We linked with other information sources. We can now actually overlay that with um, where youth are living and see how far they're travelling. And finally, um, it's been great because the organisations involved have said that was a real problem and we've been able to solve that. The final real solution to the problem when we rolled out that evaluation framework was they, the, the services also needed to keep that register at the front for an OH&S list. We've been able to do some modifications so every person, including staff, can log in and log out really quite simply. So again, that requirement meant that we, did, we went back and did a second round of changes so that it met them. Another project I wanted to talk to you about where we used exactly the same methodology to get um, a, real, a real problem solved was a product called Volunteer Alert. Now, Volunteer Alert, the problem that we were trying to solve was engaging community organisations and their volunteers into action at the right time in an emergency context. When an emergency occurs, and, and we, did, we found this out by talking to organisations, if they don't engage their volunteers to help the people that they already look after, they end up as spontaneous volunteers. So they end up in a pool somewhere 
in a mud army. Yet, if we could utilise those volunteers to help Mrs Jones, who we already have a relationship with, we can actually provide a different type of service for vulnerable people. The community sector often go, well, we couldn't really engage our volunteers, so they all run off to the mud army. Then we can't support the people we know best. Volunteer Alert was really quite a simple system, again, and our goal for Volunteer Alert was to try and look at ways to help managers communicate quickly, easily, simply. What we've done here, using your uh, My Community Directory um, login, so we've already got a login and password to another system, you don't have to fill out all your details. We allowed organisations to log in. We created a really simple tool pulling together email and SMS. For the reason being, we, we the, the volunteers needed to hear in their phone that they were needed but often 160 characters just isn't enough. The community sector can now send an alert, purchase credits at just a commercial rate, but they can choose from their list of people that they are using. So they know all these people. You can actually just go, all right, select all the people on my list, add them to the selected contacts list. You could add everyone, every list together, but it'll only send one SMS and one email because that's all we need to send. You type your email, need to fill some shifts and up here you might say please see your email for details about those shifts then you can just cut and paste your little uh, table in there about what you're trying to fill we worked with an organization that that helped us develop this and they have found that they're saving over 50 percent of the time that they were using just contacting volunteers again using the evaluation framework real life problem mapping what they're doing so this, that was the first step, but with the evaluation process, we solve a problem to communicate, but it's that next step that our evaluation um, process helped us um, identify, and that was, what else do we need to know? If we were going to map this information, now using Volunteer Alert, we can actually look at response rates for SMSs. We can now look at comparisons by regions for responses and the types of messages. We can look at how organisations receive responses across a group of organisations and look at response times. The information the organisations was collecting were the volunteers, the contact at mobile, the phone number in a spreadsheet. So we said, well, you're already collecting it. What if you could just upload that spreadsheet? So, they, so we used the information already collected from other systems. We mapped, again, where those messages were going and the response times. We were able to then link that with, uh, in the emergencies that it's been used, um, what was happening, so then you can overlay other data. And again, it brought us back to where we started and looking at, did we solve a real problem? The final product I want to talk about, which has been a much bigger project. To be honest, we didn't start out with an evaluation um, framework for it. In fact, we've really been looking at some of those things more recently, building a way for um, information to be shared. So the problem again was there was no common source of information for use by community organisations, public councils or government. We know that there's places like White Pages, Yellow Pages, Google. So we're not saying as an individual you can't find information because we know you can. But what you can't get is a Excel list of all of the disability service providers in your area or all of the sport and rec groups. Now that's what council need to use if they're going to fund and support communities. That's what government need to know if they're going to understand service delivery. As a manager of a not-for-profit, I need to know the information to do my core business. So being able to give access to live data, whether you can manipulate, search, um, and in an Excel spreadsheet, which is how we do most of our business, is the key to um, helping make that information again. We applied the idea that we needed to look at what that real problem was. However, as we've refined that and developed a little bit more of an evaluation framework, and we're, we're now developing it on the run, what we've found is that we've taken some different decisions. We've looked at our product differently because we've asked our organisations, what do you need to understand the sector? Now, I'm actually logging into a, a council level login. Anyway, when you log in, what was really important as we started to talk about how organisations can use this as part of their evaluation, understanding the sector and the work they do, this became really important. In the background, we've been collecting statistics for nearly a year. We've been, well, we collected them a long before that, but we changed our methodology 
almost a year ago, and now we collect the actual pages, types of pages people click on. We collect when searches show up in the results and all kinds of data to help us understand our database and how it was being used. However, it became really clear that information became important for the community organisation so that they could understand the sector. Like 997 organisations listed in Brisbane City Council area, 1,400 outlets, physical locations, delivering over 2,300 different types of services. Now, we're not there yet. We've still got a long way to go, but we're working towards better data quality. Um, in August, we had 2,393 pages on our website pdf or printed, so people are using it. Very interesting when you start to look at what that means. And so what we've just provided this month, after talking to them about what they need to understand the sector, is some demand-driven service delivery information. So in the Brisbane City Council pages, this month, so uh, September, we've had 8,422 health pages viewed. People have actually looked at pages containing health information. We've had um, 168 of those pages PDF'd or printed, and 11 emails contacted through my community directory to the organisation. When you start looking at this information, we're now looking at what the, the public, the 150,000 page views a month, are looking for. So it's really moving into demand-driven service delivery, understanding what people are looking for. Because when we spoke to community organisations, they were saying, if we could overlay this type of information with the other information we're collecting, it becomes really powerful. The services by type and different types of organisations. So that is now available to the community organisations, not just to council. The other thing that community organisations really do every every you know, how many people are trying to service map. What we've done is then just put all that information onto a map. But the problem with service mapping, everyone has to do their own service map because I need a, a, an aged care and a youth service map and, and someone else needs a, a service map with different categories of information. So what we've done for the sector is allowed them to say, actually, I'm doing a project with, um, oh, disability services, indigenous services. So now, we can overlay this service mapping information we need for our project. We can have a look at this and see who the manager is, what their contact details are, using a mapping based function because the sector needed to do their business. And this has all come out about that idea, what are we trying to achieve? Not just us, but the community sector. What are those community goals at the top of our evaluation, uh, you know, our, our program logic? And then we've worked back and said, how could we provide that simply, cheaply, cheaply and effectively? And then you can look at who they are, what they're doing. And these are, this is real data. The really great thing is as people update it and join, their data becomes part of the mix and they get better value. What, what happened with the change in government that I'm pleased about is they started looking at open data. Now we can start overlaying public toilets. If you're working with someone who's incontinent, you can then look at different ways of supporting them. So there's all this new data coming out up that just enriches and overlays and allows us to go back to the work we're doing and see if we're going to reach those big goals. Members of my community directory can actually download the data into an Excel spreadsheet. So you can actually download organisations, outlets, contacts. Just want a list of the contacts here because I'm looking for someone. The organisation contacts that you have in your organisation and then the services. So that's about 2,000 lines of information. Organisations are repeated because it's about what they do. Again, depending on what you're looking for, we're trying to serve up the information you need so that you can overlay that and understand the community sector. When community organisations go to this communicate button, button, they can then use volunteer alert so they can communicate with their members. But Councils now can log in and partner. So if you're doing some evaluation work with council, make sure you check because they can now SMS and email. But Brisbane City Council can actually email a selection of not-for-profits across an area. So when we start looking at evaluation and trying to engage and do consultation, we've got all this. So they can actually go and send things out. They can see who is accessing it and when that information is being used. So we've value added to council, so they come and 
use the information and help keep it up to date as well. Evaluation data for my community directory, we've done a lot of things that this, the product does, but the evaluation data that we've now been able to build in is demand by service time, comparison by location, and we're now looking at availability and service gaps. That's my community directory and our projects and what we're doing.